Thank you for joining us. Focusing upon the continuous challenges facing Israel and the irrefutable historic facts, our special show today is with Israel Ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Danon and Mark Goldman. They'll be followed by messages from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and Senator Lindsey Graham in Israel right after these messages. Life Extension Magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com. Find magic again. Sprout by HP. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. With us now is Ambassador Danny Danon and Mark Goldman. A pleasure to have you back on the show. Thank you for honor. having us. A real honor, and of course. My pleasure, thank you, Richard. Crazy times we are living in, and you know, so much confusion thinking about the Middle East and the history, but there are some things that are absolutely constant and unassailable. Please share with our audience the history, like the fact that Jerusalem was built by King David and Solomon 1700 years at least before Islam existed. Please share with our audience. Thank you for having me again, Richard. And whenever I speak at the UN, I speak about our rights to the land. I start with the biblical right. And I tell my colleagues, if you don't agree with me, read your, your Bible, read the Bible. This is our deed to the land. That's the first right. The second one is historical right, as you mentioned. When we take ambassadors to Jerusalem, we walk in the old city of Jerusalem, in the city of David, and they can actually see, they can touch the connection between the Jewish people and Jerusalem. The third right is international law. According to international law, we have the right to the land. Uh, and we should not shy about it. We should be very proud about it. And hearing uh, President Abbas lying last week at the UN, we cannot lie. We have to stick to the facts. We have to stick to the truth. And the truth speaks for itself. And of course, there's scientific uh, proof. You, you dig a hole in Katrin, you see an, an antique synagogue. Share your thoughts on this, Mark, for your perspective. It, it's clear that their other side is just making up a narrative, which they have done from the beginning. They made up a narrative that they existed before 1947. And all the other parts of their story is clearly a lie. And as Danny said, in the, in the Torah, it clearly outlines what Israel is and who that land belongs to. And the Muslims, on the one hand, acknowledge Abraham and all of that. And on the other hand, they're denying what it says in the book. So they're trying to have it both ways, like they are on everything. And none of it makes any sense. Ambassador, please elaborate on that. Well, I, I think, you know, we, we have to stick to the Bible. I know I am a diplomat. And many times people tell me, why do you speak about religion at the UN? And I think we have to speak about religion. I'm a proud Jew. I walk, very, I walk very tall in the hold of the UN, speaking about Judaism, speaking about our connection to the land, and that's how we gain respect at the UN. Many, many ambassadors, even some Muslims one, respect Israel more today because I speak about our religion and our connection to the land. I understand that you are reaching out also with initiatives in Africa. Tell us about this a little bit. So Israel is coming back to Africa and Africa is coming back to Israel. We have to remember that in the 60s, we did a lot in Africa. Prime Minister Golda Meir was the first one to push it forward. Unfortunately, after the Yom Kippur War, the African countries decided to follow the Arab League and to boycott Israel. And today, they actually acknowledge that we can help them a lot. So we collaborate with many African nations, we work with them, we can do more in terms of sharing our technology. 
that when I take the ambassadors to Israel, we show them the innovation, desalination, energy, and we want to bring it back to Africa to support those countries. So today we are very happy to have more friends in Africa. Prime Minister Netanyahu visited many countries in Africa. And personally, I have many friends from African countries today. Wonderful. Mark, switching topics yet again, you an American scholar, and from your perspective, you've seen so many administrations promising to move the embassy to Jerusalem, the US embassy that is. What are your thoughts on, on that actually, and the Golan Heights? Well, I thought that the first thing was to have uh, someone in office who said what they meant and meant what they said and did it is a, is a completely different thing than politicians saying what they think people want to hear for the sake of saying it. And I think it put the U.S.-Israel uh, relationship in the place that it needed to be. And I think I've shown you the spelling of Jerusalem, which if, if your viewers don't know that the first three letters are J-E-R and the second three letters are U-S-A. So the fact that U-S-A is right in the middle really speaks to the fundamentals of what we call the shared values and the basic principles of Western civilization that that is the source of. So that connection is there. The embassy has belonged there from the day that Israel came back. Gentlemen, you know the topography of Israel stays the same. And of course, technology change is not necessarily always in a positive direction. But I'd like us to take a look at this little video clip, which shows a topographical 3D image of nine narrow miles, how narrow Israel is and the threats Israel faces. And I'd like your comment after you see this video right now. Israel has historically been a small state surrounded by hostile countries, some of which are many times its size. In its first 50 years, it found itself engaged in five full-scale wars. Israel has little strategic depth. Only 44 miles separate between the Jordan Valley and the Mediterranean Sea. A modern fighter bomber can cross this distance in three minutes. After the Six-Day War in 1967, when Israel came under attack by four armies on three fronts, UN Security Council Resolution 242 declared that Israel had the right to live in peace within secure and recognized boundaries, free from threats or acts of force. It was not expected to withdraw fully to the fragile armistice lines from which it had been repeatedly attacked. Prior to Israel's unilateral disengagement from the Gaza Strip in 2005, President George W. Bush sent Prime Minister Ariel Sharon a letter of assurance about the West Bank, in which he stated, the United States reiterates its steadfast commitment to Israel's security, including secure, defensible borders. Both houses of the US Congress overwhelmingly approved the letter. What are Israel's defensible borders? The Jordan Rift Valley. The Jordan Rift Valley, Israel's eastern frontier, forms a natural barrier between Israel and Jordan, and beyond Jordan, Iraq and Iran. The Jordan Valley and the mountains that dominate it create a steep 4,200-foot virtual wall opposite any force attacking from the east. In the past, Israel faced numerically superior conventional armies. Though outnumbered, it succeeded in winning decisively by fully exploiting the principles of ground warfare. Today, Israel faces mainly terror armies like Hezbollah, Hamas and ISIS. It must be stressed that as long as wars are fought and ultimately won by the maneuver of land armies, then terrain and strategic depth will remain at the core of Israeli national security. To defend itself from attacks from the east, Israel must retain control over the Jordan Valley and the western mountain ridge that dominates it. Israel cannot concede this vital area in any diplomatic arrangement. That was the position taken by the architects of Israel's national security, like Yigal Alon, Moshe Dayan, and Yitzhak Rabin, and it remains as relevant today as it was back then. Israel's mountain ridge. 
Israeli withdrawal to the 1967 lines, really the 1949 armistice lines, would be suicidal. The western slopes of the mountain ridge dominate Israel's coastal plain, where more than 70% of its population and 80% of its industrial capacity is located. All flights in and out of Israel's main international airport, Ben Gurion, would be threatened by shoulder-launched anti-aircraft missiles. Vital early warning stations facing east would be lost. With terror armies increasingly using low-flying drones in Syria and Yemen, Israel must protect its air defense assets all along this critical terrain. With a full withdrawal, the country's width would be reduced to a narrow nine-mile waistline and would be impossible to defend. Therefore, any future arrangement must include Israeli control over key parts of the mountain ridge, demilitarization of the West Bank, and continuing Israeli control of its airspace. In addition, Israel must protect itself against the kind of attack tunnels used in recent years by Hamas and Hezbollah along its southern and northern fronts. The attack tunnels are emerging as part of the new strategic landscape facing Israel on all its fronts. To preclude their use, Israel must retain overriding security responsibility within the area from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. In the last two decades, it had been hoped that Israeli withdrawals from Gaza and southern Lebanon would reduce the hostile intent of its adversaries. But the exact opposite occurred. The withdrawals only led to escalating threats along its borders. Moreover, the past notion that great powers will intervene in the Middle East to halt acts of aggression when red lines are crossed has been disproven. Increasingly, Middle East states are on their own. In a volatile Middle East, where there's an explosive mix of resurgent jihadist movements and regimes driven by hegemonial ambitions, uncertainty is rampant. More than ever, it is crucial to ensure defensible borders for Israel, so that Israel can defend itself by itself. We are back with Ambassador Danon and Mark Goldman. Ambassador, what are your thoughts with regard to the realities of the topography and the natural barriers that protect Israel? So when you look at the map or when you come to Israel, and I want to encourage everybody to make the trip and to come to Israel. We have direct flights from New York, Washington, Miami, Chicago, LA, you name it. Come to Israel, see for yourself. When you come to Israel, you understand how, how small we are, how fragile we are but at the same time we are determined to protect ourselves. And when you look at, at the borders of Israel, you know, the US, if you will make a mistake with your neighbors, you can fix it. We have no room for mistakes. Uh, that's why we have to take the right decisions and we have to stand strong on our principles because there is no place for mistakes when you have a, a tiny country like Israel. Mark, the ambassador just said the people should come and see for themselves, yet, uh, the Jewish community of the United States, many of them have never even visited Israel to see for themselves. What are your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts are that all too many Jews are disconnected from what Judaism really means and what Judaism has contributed to the world. Because, as Danny mentioned, there's been so many contributions technologically and otherwise that have made life better for so many people in, in our modern world and so forth. But the more fundamental one is the Jewish con contribution of being the messengers of God's message, explaining that there's one God and there's right and wrong. So murder is not okay, which used to be okay, and stealing used to be okay, and all other behaviors that we consider civilized come from there. And imagine what it would look like had that message not been delivered. So much more could be achieved in peace but we have to pause for these commercial messages. We'll be right back. Life Extension Magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced, they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. 
Learn more at lifeextension.com. We are back with Ambassador Danny Danon and Mark Goldman. A very important subject we cannot avoid is, thank God, the friendship between the United States of America and Israel. Please share your thoughts on that, Mr. Ambassador. We are grateful. We are grateful for the partnership. I feel it every day at the UN when I have the, the umbrella of the US. Only a few days ago, when President Abbas wanted to come to the UN to condemn the US and Israel, we worked together and we blocked that resolution. We should be grateful for that, and, and we see the results on the ground, moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, recognizing uh, the Golan Heights, uh, pulling out from the Iran deal, which was a, a meaningful decision of President Trump, and, and his efforts to promote peace in the region. So we should be optimistic about that. We should not take it for granted. We should educate the next generation, my children, uh, your children, that we are one people, we are standing together against evil, and if we will continue to be together, we will prevail. Well said. Mark, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I couldn't agree more with everything that Danny just said. He's absolutely right. And as I described, but I'd like to just show the picture of what it looks like and how it really shows the connection. Because um, when you think about it, that is what has made the most significant difference in the whole world. And President Trump can't be commended enough for all that he's done to show because it means the rule of law. It means that people are protected. It means that the government is doing what it's supposed to do and all of those things. So thank, thank God for President Trump create, you know, developing and acknowledging the relationship for what it is. Ambassador Danon, a final message for our audience. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for learning about Israel, about standing with Israel, for praying for Israel, it is important for us. When I stand at the podium of the United Nations against so many hostile countries, I know that I'm not alone. I know that I represent not only the Jewish people, but also millions of Christians who support and love Israel. I must volunteer a thought and say, like the Prime Minister Netanyahu and others, in the media war for Israel, you are a hero of Israel. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Well. A real pleasure. And Mark, no, my pleasure. you as well. Thank you. Thank you. This is the eve of Purim, and we have uh, a miracle of Purim. We call it Nes Purim. President Trump has just made history. I called him. I thanked him on behalf of the people of Israel. He did it again. First, he uh, recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moved the U.S. Embassy here. Then he pulled out of the disastrous Iran Treaty and reimposed sanctions. But now he did something of equal historic importance. He recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And he did so at a time when Iran is trying to use Syria as a platform to attack and destroy Israel. And the message that President Trump has given the world is that America stands by Israel. There is no greater friendship than the one between Israel and the United States. And no one represents it better than Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Uh, you and Ambassador Friedman and your delegation are exceptional champions of our lives. I've called you so many times on so many things that this evening I just want to say one word. Two, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Pompeo. Thank you, President Trump. And thank you, America. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, President Trump made the decision to recognize that that hard-fought real estate, that important place, uh, is proper to be a sovereign part of the state of Israel. Uh, uh, President Trump made a, a bold decision to recognize that an important decision for the people of Israel it will truly be historic. 
And the people of Israel should know that the battles they fought, the lives that they lost on that very ground uh, were worthy and meaningful and important for all time. Thank you, America. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with uh, two of the greatest friends of Israel, and they're also my personal friends, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham uh, and Ambassador David Friedman. Uh, Senator, this is not your first time in the Golan Heights, but I think every time you come here, you can appreciate the strategic importance of uh, Israel being on the Golan Heights and the fact that we're creating here new life, green life, uh, a future, which is very different, obviously, from what existed before. Uh, I think the most important observation that I'd make is that uh, the Golan has always been part of Israel from our, the earliest days of our history, and it's certainly been the uh, part of the state of Israel since 1967 and more recently since 1981. The Golan is part of Israel. The Golan must stay part of Israel forever. And I think it's very important that the international community uh, recognize this fact and accept it and most especially our great friend, the United States of America. Uh, I want to thank you for your unbelievable support. I don't think the citizens of Israel know everything that I know about uh, the work you've done over successive administrations. Uh, we have no greater friend, and we, uh, we appreciate it. So thank, thank you, friend, you. and welcome, friend. Thank you very much. Uh, I come here as a United States senator from the state of South Carolina. I come here as an American. I come here to try to figure out what's best for America. What's best for America is for a safe, secure, and prosperous Israel. Why? Common values, common enemies, and from a military point of view, the best friend the United States could possibly ever have in a troubled region. I cannot tell you how much intelligence is given to the United States for my friends in Israel that protect the American homeland. So if you believe as I do, the state of Israel is a strategic partner to the United States and its survival and its prosperity and security is relevant to American national security, you would come here, the Golan. For decades, this was one of the more peaceful parts of the border that Israel uh, has to police. Not so much now. The Golan, as part of the state of Israel, now and forever, because to give this territory up would be a strategic nightmare for the state of Israel. And who would you give it to? That's Syria. It is a mess. My heart breaks for the Syrian people. You're not helping the Syrian people by putting Israel at extreme risk. There is no construct I can imagine now or any time in the future for the state of Israel to give the Golan up. This territory has a rich Jewish history. Strategically, I am standing on one of the most important pieces of ground in the state of Israel. The Golan is in the hands of Israel and always remain in the hands of Israel. I agree. <laughs> So that it is inconceivable that Israel could ever give it to anyone, given the threats Israel faces. And I'll tell the president there's unity here. There's not one political party of note in Israel that would come out with a different uh, conclusion. So if you're looking for <coughs> common ground politically in Israel, it would be the goal line. If you're looking for strategic ground to keep Israel safe and secure, it would be the goal line. If you're looking for to send a message to the world about uh, what happens if you attack Israel, it would be giving the goal line to Israel. And I want everyone to know, those who wish to destroy Israel, and they're growing in number, the more you do to harm this state, the more America will do to protect this state. Thank you. Thank you. David, do you want to say anything? I could not agree more with Senator Graham, and I thank you, as always, for your incredible leadership on this issue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anywhere else, 
This would be a vacation on the Mediterranean. But here, it's also a journey into history. From modern Tel Aviv to the ancient cities of Herod, the Romans, the Crusaders. The history of Israel lives in all of us. Come find the Israel in you. Human age reversal, we may be there already. Human studies are now ready to begin to confirm meaningful reversal of pathological aging processes. These clinical trials aim to alter older humans so that they function as much younger individuals. Even modest success will result in a paradigm shift that will impart enormous societal benefits, such as sparing Medicare from insolvency. Life extension is not standing idle while 5,000 Americans die each day from age-related illnesses. Joining us are physician scientists who want to hurry up these technologies to keep people from aging to death. While life extension is pushing these projects forward, we need financial help to ensure these studies are carried through to fruition. Life Extension Magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced, they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com. This concludes our special show for today. I'm Genevieve Breen. Thank you for being with us. Yeah.